Regrettably, he is not in any sort of condition to resume the powers and responsibilities of this office at this time. Understanding, as always, that our first and only duty is to the American people. I have prepared a document for your signatures declaring that we are left no choice but to challenge President Grant's fitness to again assume... Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Morning. All displays of negativity will be deliciously repackaged and probably returned to sender. Only good vibes allowed beyond this point. Now, if you're ready, come on in. Welcome to Facebook Conversations. Champagne gang, Fizz found confidant. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Fizz Feed Conversations, Trump Watch 2024. Y'all, so it looks like Biden may be stepping down from the presidential election. According to this article that I saw on WrestlingEdge.com, and it was written by Michael Joseph, Biden reportedly will drop out of the election. So Bill O'Reilly tweeted, according to the article, here's a Biden update from BillOReilly.com news headquarters. The decision has been made that the president will quit the campaign for two reasons. Number two, because the fundraising is drying up. And number one, because they don't think he can recover from the debates. So he goes on to ask, what now? The world's most powerful country finds itself in a political conundrum. He goes on to talk about the president, the most powerful man in the world, has been unmasked as mentally diminished beyond repair. He continues on about how the White House progressives who hid the truth should be forever shunned. Do y'all know what this makes me think of? Y'all remember that time in Scandal when the president fits? was shot and in a coma and Millie signed that document pretending the president was okay. Do y'all remember that episode? Yeah. So I guess he thinks this was a game of cover-up and he talks about how he feels Biden's house and leadership is a whole cluster fruck of bad decisions. And he goes on and on and on about his feelings towards Biden, yada, 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 as if Biden single-handedly created the mess we see today. So then I went over to BillOReilly.com and the article suggests that President Biden is in a situation similar to President Nixon during the Watergate scandal, struggling to maintain his position. So influential figures within the Democratic Party believe Biden cannot win re-election and may risk losing the Senate and House seats if he remains in the race. Biden's support and fundraising are declining, especially after a poor debate performance. The Democratic Party is now debating how to replace Biden with no clear successor. Potential candidates include Vice President Kamala Harris, Governors Gavin Newsom and J.B. Pritzker, all of whom are considered too far left to effectively challenge Donald Trump. Michelle Obama is also mentioned as a potential contender, though her intentions are unclear. The article predicts that Biden will soon step aside similar to President Johnson in 1968. However, this decision will involve careful coordination with top liberal media and Hollywood influencers to ensure a smooth transition. The article concludes that Biden's political power is waning and he will likely have to retire quietly along with his wife, Jill Biden. So yeah, then I went over to CNN.com and <laughs> I hope your glasses are filled to the rim because this is about to get juicy. So I want y'all to picture this. Picture the debates going on and phones buzzing like crazy just three minutes into the debate and suddenly the Democratic Party is all full gossip squad, right? Everybody's in gossip mode. Joe Biden's top aides and potential replacements are low-key starting to think about what a wild last-minute fight into the August convention could look like. And no, they're not writing anything down or making any firm commitments. They're just keeping an eye on things while swiping through their phones. They're carefully watching each other like hawks looking for any slip-ups or power moves. For instance, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer's PAC text out a fundraising appeal that screamed future presidential candidate and this was right after the debate. So talk about timing, right? 
Now, more than two dozen top Democratic officials, political operatives, and donors are all freaking out about every possible scenario. It's like they're trapped in a nightmare episode of the House of Cards. So imagine sticking with Biden, a Kamala Harris nomination, or even someone new beating the first black female VP. And don't even get them started on the drama of multiple ballots spilling ideological and personal feuds on national TV. One Democratic bigwig said it could be a Category 5 hurricane. Translation, pure chaos. Others argue that it's all about beating Trump. One major donor said, I think we can absolutely swap and win. If Joe's the guy, we're in. If not, we're still in. Talk about loyalty, right? Meanwhile, a CBS News YouGov poll showed that only 55% of registered Democratic voters want Biden to keep running. Biden's team is pointing to some of their best grassroots fundraising days and a surge in job applications as proof that he still got it. The kicker, Biden's got most of the delegates because he's won all the primaries. So, unless he decides to pull out officially, those delegates are his. It's like he's the captain of a sinking ship refusing to abandon it. Democratic insiders are mad that Biden didn't bow out before. They feel his team isn't being honest about his chances or capable of steering him towards a graceful exit. At a fundraiser, even Jill Biden, usually adored as the quirky political spouse, was catching some heat. Then there's the short list. Harris, Illinois Government J.B. Pritzker, Whitmer, Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, California Governor Gavin Newsom, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, Georgia Senator Raphael Warnock, Transportation Security Pete Buttigieg, I think that's how that's pronounced, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, and Maryland Governor Wes Moore, but none of them are making any moves yet. They don't want to look like traitors. So a debate watch party in L.A. turned into a whole spectacle, child. Robert Reiner was shouting about losing and Jane Fonda had tears in her eyes. Even Obama's treading carefully, calling politics a team sport with Biden as the captain. He's like, let's focus on getting Jeffries to be speaker for now. Biden's team dismisses the idea of a replacement. They're sending Donna Brazile and Stephanie Cutter to shut down the rumors. Brazil's like, how the fuck are you going to put all of these white people ahead of Kamala? You know it's serious when she's dropping F-bombs. <laughs> I'm sure they do it all the time. Governor Phil Murphy had dinner with Biden and feels confident sticking beside him. Though he mentioned Biden's age twice. He's 81, Murphy reminded everyone. But he insists Biden has proven he can unite the party. If Biden steps down, most agree Harris would have the early edge. Not endorsing her would be a snub bigger than when Obama picked Hillary over Biden. But Harris has her own issues, years of scrutiny, association with Biden, and her own word salad answers. Some are gaming out a scenario where Harris fails on the first ballot and someone else rides in like a white knight to save the day. Imagine multiple candidates running around the convention floor making deals. It would be reality TV gold, but maybe not the best look for the party. In the end, Biden's campaign insists he's the nominee. Cutter warns, be careful what you wish for because you would ensure a Trump victory. So the plan, soldier through, hope the panic fades, and trust that voters are still backing Biden. I don't know how. California rep Robert Garcia summed it all up. 100% he's the nominee. Anything else is unserious chatter. So for now, the Democrats are sticking with their captain, hoping he can steer them through this storm. So y'all, help me understand, right? So if they don't have any funding, what happens to the campaign? If they can't campaign, does that mean they can't run? And if they can't run, doesn't that mean Trump wins by default? What's happening here? I have so many questions. I do. And on top of all of this, the Supreme Court has ruled in favor of Trump and he now has immunity. Mm -hmm. What the hell are we doing? So y'all just activated Thanos mode and gave this man the second to the last infinity stone, huh? Because all he needs now is the presidency and he has ultimate power. He can call whatever he wants to a threat to national security and erase the threat with no consequence. 
So both of those articles were posted on June 30th. So will he drop out? Hmm? Who knows? I hope so, because he's too old. And again, I say so is Trump. Y'all, he's right around the corner from Biden. So what do you think he's going to look like and sound like in another four years? Unless he somehow found the fountain of youth or that magical potion from the movie Death Becomes Her. So we'll see. But in an article on Nation.com, it says, Well, Donald Trump won. The Supreme Court today ruled that presidents are entitled to absolute immunity from criminal prosecution for official acts. Then contended that pressuring the vice president and the Department of Justice to overthrow the government was an official act. Then said that talking to advisors or making public statements are official acts as well. And then determined that the evidence of what presidents say and do cannot be used against them to establish that their acts are unofficial. So the ruling from the Supreme Court was six to three and written by Chief Justice John Roberts on a straight party line vote with all the Republicans appointed justices joining to give the president the power of a king, according to the article. So while some parts of the federal indictment against Trump will be remanded back down to the district court trial judge to determine whether any of Trump's actions were unofficial, unofficial acts, the court say, are not entitled to immunity, Trump's victory in front of the Supreme Court is total. Essentially, all he has to do is claim that everything he did to plot a coup was a part of his official duties and the Supreme Court provided no clear method or evidentiary standard that can be used to challenge that presumption. So legally, there are two critical things here to understand about the totality of the court's ruling. First, the immunity is absolute. There is no legislative way to get rid of what the court has given. So on the point of immunity, we have to understand that it far exceeds, let's say, the immunity of police officers or of other government officials when they act in their official capacities. They are granted qualified immunity from civil penalties, which means the act has to qualify for immunity or it can be pierced or taken away. So others can argue and bring evidence as to why they shouldn't be given immunity. But this is not the same as what Trump received. Presidents are now entitled to absolute immunity, top, highest, which means no matter what they do while in office, they are forever immune, no matter what evidence is brought, which also exempts them from criminal charges. So he says a president can murder, can grape, can steal, and pretty much do whatever they want. So as long as they argue that whatever they did is a part of their official job as the president of the United States, there's no crime that pierces the veil of absolute immunity. So nothing he does is punishable. And there's essentially nothing that we can do to change it. Qualified immunity can be undone by state or federal legislatures. They can just pass the law removing it. The court here says that with absolute immunity, Congress cannot take it away. Impeachment and only impeachment is the only way to punish presidents. And somewhat obviously, impeachment does nothing to a president who is already no longer in office. So if he is elected, he can go on a four to eight year vendetta and there's nothing anyone can do about it. He can take a step into the bad side and step back into the light whenever he wants to and he can call it official behavior. So does this mean his 34 felonies just disappear just that fast? Now you see him, now you don't? That would be the shortest stint as a felon in history. Do you really think if the Supreme Court gave him immunity that the lower courts are going to prosecute? prosecute the man running for president. So the article goes on to say, while the Supreme Court says unofficial acts are still prosecutable, the court has left nearly no sphere in which the president can be said to be acting unofficially. And more importantly, the court has left virtually no vector of evidence that can be deployed against the president to prove that their acts were unofficial. If trying to overthrow the government is official, then what isn't? And if we can't use the evidence of what the president says or does because communications with their advisors or other government officials and the public is official, then how can we ever show that an act was taken unofficially? So since that's not going to happen, Trump won. 
He won completely. He tried to overthrow the government and he got away with it. I cannot even imagine what he'll try to do if he's actually given the power again, knowing full well that he will never be held accountable for literal crimes. So if Trump wins, he has ultimate power and ultimate protection from any criminal acts so he can have us all in the squid games or the Hunger Games, and they can't do anything to stop him because he can say it was an official act to see if the economy gets better, if we have to fight for our survival. He would be the one to usher in the purge, mm -hmm. to quench the thirst of these bloodthirsty groups marching down the streets looking for the right to strike. He would be the one. You allowed a man to attempt to overthrow the government because he didn't get his way and then said well it was part of his right as president and you granted it to a man who is running for president so now he knows no matter what he does in office he can now not be touched so he can now screw all the porn stars he want to and say securing the presidential woodpecker is official business Mm -hmm. So he can have a wife and several concubines on the side, like the kings of old. What are they going to do to him? Nothing. And where is Melania? That's the question. Where's Melania? Why has no one heard from her since March or April when she attended her son's graduation? Why hasn't anyone heard from her? And why is no one concerned? A man running for president and his wife is not by his side on the campaign trail. She wasn't there for the trial for the presidential debate. What's going on here? The Associated Press reached out to 15 people who have been in major fundraisers or in Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate recently and no one has encountered Melania on the Florida property. Her office has not responded to several requests for comment. Her only public statement as of late came two days after the Republican Party in Florida announced with fanfare that son Baron Trump 18 was chosen as a state delegate for the Republican National Convention and her office said he could not make it citing prior commitments. Reporters at the New York courthouse during Trump's felony trial repeatedly asked him, where's Melania? But he never answered. Can somebody do a welfare check on Melania, please? Because I'm starting to be concerned about where the former future first lady is and why she isn't campaigning by his side. Somebody better get Uncle Sam to go check on Melania. Where's she at? Y'all not concerned about why the former first lady just disappeared? No words, no nothing, just gone. Vamanos, arrivederci, see you later. Catch me if you can. I mean, where is she? And where is the democratic money? Some, y'all, I have so many questions. Because are y'all telling me that none of the Democrats have money? Or you gotta be telling me all the Democrats went red? Please tell me which one. Someone help me understand because if everybody with money is voting red, the Democrats are in trouble. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about all of this. Let me know what you think about Biden dropping out of the presidential race. Let me know what you think about the potential for other Democratic candidates. Let me know what you think about Trump potentially becoming president. Also, somebody please answer for me in the comments, where is Melania? I think I'm gonna start a hashtag. Where's Melania? Blink two times if you need help. Send a SOS. <laughs> Did Trump have you in hiding? Where is she? <laughs> Drop in the comments to let me know. Consider joining the Champagne Gang in the Fizz fam. Hit that like and subscribe button and also the notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into whichever section we jump into for another show. Consider supporting the channel and hitting the cash app. It is on the screen. And don't worry, if you're not sure about joining the Champagne Gang yet, we'll leave the light on for you. Thank you for joining me for another Fizz Feed conversation. Until next time, keep it bubbly. And always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Till we meet again, ta-ta.